So I'm currently setting up a small ground mount that will have 10 400 watt panels, but I want a way to bring the solar cables and not just one string, but multiple strings through the wall here and into my garage. Now, although we'll be doing a bunch of different setups, right now I'm just trying to get my backup power ready for the home. So that'll be an EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 and then the Delta Pro Ultra running into two different 50 amp generator inlets. And that is the corner I'm targeting to bring it through. So let me show you how I'm gonna approach this, which will be a flexible solution, but also give you a few different options just in case you have a little different application. So what I'm gonna do is start locating some of the utilities and also get a reference point. Here I'm gonna use a PVC drain line coming from inside the garage so I can take a measurement from inside to outside and make sure I'm at the right location. Then moving on to locating studs because I want to have a stud to mount the junction boxes on but also make sure I'm not going to hit the stud when I'm drilling an inch and three quarters hole through which is where we're going to pass all the solar cables. So here is the cavity that I want to hit and I found the stud that I'll start to mount my inside 8x8 eight eight PVC box to and then I have an 8x8 eight eight PVC box on the outside and then we'll drill the holes between these two. So first up, I just want to locate everything. What we'll do is get a bearing here on, again, where is the middle of that box, where's the stud, and where would I wanna place the larger hole in the box? So I'm gonna favor the lower left-hand corner. And I got my measurements, which I was able to correspond with the outside, and everything looked good. Take your time, you wanna make sure you're not hitting any electrical lines, any water pipes, any gas lines, anything. So I'm just gonna start off with a small drill bit, which will give me an exploratory hole and a location hole through the inside box, through the drywall, through any insulation, OSB sheathing on the outside, and then to that fiber cement board, which if you have any type of masonry or anything on the outside, when you're drilling from inside to out, just know you can't blow out a hole. So take your time and don't force it too much. So I wanna mount this outside PVC box as well, and then complete the drill hole all the way through so we have a reference hole for our hole saws. So now that we have both of the junction boxes mounted and a through hole in the wall, now I can go ahead and use some hole saws, multiple different hole saws, just a standard one for the plastic boxes, the drywall on the inside, any insulation I need to get through. But this is fiber cement board, so I do need to use a carbide bit hole saw to go ahead and get a clear passage through so we can use some plastic PVC to make sure we have a nice clear run from the outside junction box to the inside junction box. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna actually integrate MC4 connectors to give me flexibility to plug and unplug different strings while keeping a watertight connection. So let's go ahead and remove both of the PVC boxes because I'll want to drill the holes without the boxes on the wall. I'm gonna start off with a standard hole saw, which is inch and three quarters, which will give me the diameter need to use inch and one quarter PVC conduit. So you can go in the reverse direction to start your hole and then slowly start to drill, letting the teeth do the work, but they will grab. So take your time so you don't damage your box, but this also goes for your wall, the OSB sheathing on the outside of your home. Maybe you have vinyl siding or maybe you have fiber cement board like I have. Now I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. This is two and one eighth hole saw going through the drywall. Again, I'm going in the reverse direction to go ahead and start my hole. And then I'll go ahead and go in the correct direction, letting it eat through the wall but also knowing that that hole is set and it's not gonna jump out and damage the drywall. Now everything looks good and we have an inch and three quarters and this is a carbide bit that I'll be able to get through that fiber cement board and then make it through the half inch or five eighths of an inch OSB sheathing on the outside of the house to complete our hole all the way through. And now for the wiring portion on both of these PVC boxes, I'll just start marking four different locations on each side because I'm gonna bring through two sets of NC4 connectors on each side and then wire those up to 10 gauge solar cable. I'm just using a stepper bit here and then checking to make sure that the MC4 connectors fit through the hole and then progressing to drill the rest of the holes on the one side. Flipping it over, I'll do something very similar. I'm spacing it two inches from the back side and then just spacing consistently for each of the four connectors on the one side. Once I have those marked, I'll take that stepper bit again, 
and just drill down, giving myself enough clearance so I can pass those through. Now I'll do that same thing for the other box in the exact same uh, process and clean out the internal so there's no burrs and just extra pl plastic on the inside. Then I'm checking my adapter cable for the EcoFlow just to see which red wire and black wire goes to what male or female connector. And then I go ahead and crimp those on. So you do need to have an MC4 crimping kit. You can find a crimping kit, very inexpensive, in the link in the description or this QR code right here will take you over to the list of all the different parts and tools we're using on this video. I'm also a big fan of lever nuts. Usually I use Wago 221, and here I'd use 613s for 10 gauge wire, but I'm actually trying out the ideal Ensure lever nuts to see how they work and see if they're comparable to the Wagos. Now I'll go ahead and wire this one box, but also I will glue my one PVC adapter so we'll be able to run inch and a quarter PVC conduit through the wall. And then it was the exact same process, but just a little longer pigtails. You'll see why here in a minute. I'm using some what looks like clay there, but it's actually duct seal. That's the electrician's best friend for sealing up holes like the one we cut for the inch and a quarter PVC conduit. Now we'll place those two mounting screws that we had earlier back in, but we'll add two more as this is gonna be the permanent installation of this exterior box. And then inside I have that adapter, it's a coupling and then just a small piece of inch and a quarter PVC to extend out to our adapter on the outside and make it one continuous piece going into the interior box here. Just two mounting screws going directly into the stud will secure our interior box. And now I can start passing through one at a time, each one of these longer pigtails because they need to reach through that conduit and give us some extra wire inside. Now one at a time starts to fill that up, so you might have to straighten out your copper strands, or in the worst case scenario, maybe you have to bring out your wire strippers and cut off the copper and get some new one so you can put that into those ideal lever nuts. Links in the description for all these different parts. Lever nuts like the Wago 613 or these ideal Ensure are really handy for this type of work and they can handle the 10 gauge. So let's go ahead and test everything out. A little overcast, but that will pass. I have three 405 watt panels hooked up in series to some extension cables here to the MC4 connectors. We'll go into one of our four inputs here. And then that is already connected up to the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 on the inside. Let's check and see if we're passing in any solar power. So you can see that same connection is made inside through an adapter cable that goes into an XT60i in the back of the Delta Pro 3. And then we saw we were overcast, but we are confirming that we are seeing solar power come in. So overall, I am happy with the finished product and that's gonna give me the flexibility of the four different inputs I need for that Delta Pro Ultra and the Delta Pro 3 because each of those have two solar inputs that you can utilize. Now go ahead and grill me down in the comments. What would you have done differently? What did I do wrong? When it comes to portable power and passing solar power into our home, the electrical code is a little hazy. So do check in your own area to see what your inspector would approve or what else you're gonna need to consider. Now remember, 2025 sounds like it might be the last year for the 30% tax credit. So if you're thinking of a larger solar installation to offset your monthly power bill, there is a link in the description in a few minutes, a little information on your home, and you can get the size of that system you're gonna need to get installed and roughly what that would cost with that 30% tax credit. When that goes away, return on investment's gonna go way up on these larger systems, especially professionally installed ones. Now, if you want a little different way to get wires inside a structure, you can check this one out. This is an easier bulkhead connector I use from a single panel into a solar shed. Or if you have a roof mount, the easy solar junction boxes are kind of the industry standard. You can check out the installation in this video right here. So thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.